Welcome back to the Tidy Room Hangar. This is Mike, and today I want to talk to you about HasLab, HasLab projects, why HasLab exists, and why without HasLab we would not get these projects. There's a lot of talk about HasLab these days, good and bad. They're supporters of HasLab, and of course we have a couple of issues with the projects, but we just funded yet another HasLab project, another successful one. We're going to talk about all this coming up. First off, we need to talk about the HasLab cell bars. That's the first project that they made, and it was pretty successful. It took a while to get funded. There were a lot of concerns and questions about this, and a lot of pushback on it. And there were a lot of interesting things that went on with this. But at the end of the day, it was a good project, and we would not have got this at retail, the size it is, if we didn't have HasLab. So they made it as big as they could, and still shipped through FedEx. So they chose FedEx, I think, UPS probably could have done just fine also, but they shipped it as big as they could. So if they made it any bigger, then it wouldn't have shipped through that means and they would have to go to a different shipping means. So that is what kind of kept the size at the size that it was. But it's still not to scale. A lot of people say that for a cell bar to be at scale, it needs to be over seven foot long. And a friend of mine actually has one that was made back in the 80s at a true 118 scale. And this is almost seven and a half feet long. That's about the same length as a USS flag. Now, if they were to make this thing at retail, it definitely would not be the size of HasLab. If they were to make the cell barge and it was retail only, it would be about a third smaller or maybe even half the size. You wouldn't have the same type of vehicle. Now, you can look at some examples here of how these big ships don't work at retail anymore or they haven't really worked at retail for over a decade. Take the Legacy Falcon, which is what everybody that is anti-HasLab says, well, they reissued the Falcon. Well, yes. And when they did the HasLab program, they said if they ever reissued the Falcon, it would be four to $500. And they were right. It was. But that wasn't the biggest problem. So the reissued Millennium Falcon was the Smuggler's Run one from Galaxy's Edge. And Target went ahead and picked this up as an exclusive. And there's a lot of issues with it being in a park. This large of a vehicle in the parks has its own issues. How are you going to take this thing home? And of course, if the park's closed, it's not going to sell. The thing about this is when Target picked it up, the vast majority sold online. And I found out from Target employees that not only when you order online, the initial pre-order comes from a warehouse or whatever, but the other ones come from the store. So yeah, they were showing up in stores, but they were being ordered online for the most part. A handful of people bought them while they were in the store. But for the most part, those were still sold to online sellers. So online is really the way it should be. These online buyers are buying it and it's shipping out of a Target. Now, I happen to know of one Target that had four of these Falcons. And I, I only stopped the picture when they finally got down to two. But it took over a year for them to sell. And the reason they didn't sell them online, because when I scanned them on a little scanner, it said zero in inventory. So whenever they did put this on sale, it didn't go on sale in that one store because they said they had zero inventory, so they didn't need to mark it down. So the interesting thing apart of this is this big vehicle sat for almost a year before it sold out, four of them. And they're the same ones. They got a lot of shelf wear, a lot of abuse, a lot of beat. Finally, I ended up buying one of these when we had the 25% off of any one toy coupon on Circle but this goes to show you, retail really isn't the place for these big vehicles. So let's cite about four more examples. The original Legacy Falcon at Walmart was $130. Yeah, and then they put the thing out later for $400. It's crazy. If they put it out again, it's going to be $1,000, right? So this thing was at Walmart's and it was $130. After about six months, clearance to $100. After about a week, they seemed to just magically disappear. What I didn't know at the time was they moved them all out to the garden center and in the garden center kept getting marked down until finally they hit 35 bucks and somebody bought the rest of them for 35 bucks each and then sold them for $1,200 on eBay about five or six years later. It's crazy that that's how it happened, but that's how it happened. Retailers are tired of getting burned by these things. The Legacy AT-AT is probably one of the best values 
it was a hundred dollars and when it came out for a hundred bucks it was amazing and i bought sort of bought mine for a christmas gift told my wife hey give me that for my christmas gift open it up on christmas I, it was very impressive a little bit lighter weight than i thought it would be but it's a very impressive vehicle and an impressive item but yet this thing did not sell well at retail there were still i think three or four of these at every walmart when they clearance them down to 49 dollars they were a great value at 100 but at 49 an amazing value and they still didn't sell that fast at 49 dollars it blows your mind today that that even happened retailers don't like getting burned like this and there's the mtt not to be confused for mmt modern monetary theory which is a failure but mtt the multi-troop transport here this thing is very impressive I, i'm just going to admit it's impressive the electronics they put in it what they did with it it just looks like a massive amount of figures even though the majority of the 20 figures are well they're not really uh figures but it's cool what it is i passed on this until i saw it sit on the shelf for a year and go from the original MSRPF, I think 150, down to, yes again, 35 bucks. And it took over a week for these to sell out at 35 bucks. That was crazy. Still a good vehicle, but another burn for these retailers. And yes, the ATACT, or whatever you want to call it for a fun nickname, at ADACT. But this thing here is another one that is kind of impressive technology wise it's about the same size as the vintage one but they uh, they were commanding a 300 dollars price point at retail so this thing had a lot of delays in manufacturing and when it finally did hit de retail it had a very fast 50 percent discount i was prepared to buy one on clearance or sell or whatever and they went to 150 i didn't even buy it at 150 i knew that within a week it got clearance to 50 or 150 then it would go cheaper than that and yes they went down i got mine at like 93 bucks and i even saw them as cheap as 75 dollars so retailers again getting burned on this i think target was the one that got the majority of these getting burned they don't want to get burned going forward that's why buyers aren't interested in big vehicles like this and yes you may say other parts of the store have big items and we're going to talk about that Castle Grayskull is another example of a large item that is not selling right at retail. It sells well at retail, but this shows where retailers aren't really able to handle this for whatever reason. Every single one of these at Walmart, because Walmart got them first, showed up in the Lego aisle. Now that doesn't really make sense, and I never, ever personally saw one of these in a Walmart. But everybody that reported it that they found one said they found it on the lego aisle and even my family was shopping out of town and they found one on the lego aisle i said box beat up i don't want it but it's pretty interesting how hard the retail has to work to support this I, I don't know what's wrong why not clear up space change your planogram or whatever i don't really know but target get these in when target got these in they put them over by the luggage like yeah there's a little shelf by the luggage that has big giant toys like uh, power wheels and all those kinds of things but they stuck it over with that not with its own property and its own franchise and a lot of people don't even know it's there i mean to this day i bet you people don't know there's three of them sitting over there a lot of people like to argue and they like to say that well others oh, just look at all this empty space let's stick it on the shelf on this empty space well they are constantly adjusting and changing this plan of grand and maybe yes walmart and targets they are at fault for this they haven't figured out how to sell products this big but you really look at it for the franchises that we have with star wars with transformers and all this kind of stuff do you really see product that big not anymore you don't even see regular ships at retail for star wars at all anymore for the 3.75 inch the only ships you see for star wars are for the little bitty galaxy or whatever they call the little baby line that two inch baby line that they make and there's those ships are going to be 50 bucks when you start to look at retail and you say, well, there's other areas that have big items that sell and they're a much lower price point. So size and price point, those aren't the issue. Well, when it comes to toys, they are. But when you look at, say, the furniture section and you look at tables or uh, shelving, and what I like to really look at, what I paid attention to is bookshelves. This is, I store my figures on bookshelves, the five shelf bookshelf and the three shelf bookshelf. And the reason I know about all this is because I pay close attention to that. 
and how quickly they go in and out, in and out, in and out of stock. I would venture to say that each Walmart sells about a thousand shelves for the space that it would take to put a cell barge or one of those Haslab items. So a thousand items at 30 bucks still is generating a lot more revenue than four or $500 items. And how many Walmarts and Targets have you seen this Slave 1? This is out, it's, it's something, it's a modern item. Well, it's more or less getting remade but the thing about this is you don't see it at Walmart, you don't see it at Targets, you see one at GameStop. It's like one coveted at GameStop that got a light shining on it. This is the one the, the one thing that they've got and you can get it and you can buy it. When they sell their one, that's all they've got. So uh, mine's like that. Maybe you have one of these super deluxe GameStops or something that has two. <laughs> but the these just don't work at retail anymore. The ships don't work at retail anymore. And you can argue whatever reasons back and forth, but they're not selling to the level that the companies want to sell. So there it is. So it brings us to the Razor Crest. Now I backed the Razor Crest and I actually did not want this to be a Haslab. I would have rather than made it for 150 price point, put it in the store, made it even smaller, not a big deal, uh, less gimmicks and gadgets and stuff. But that's not what happened. And so this was a Haslab. So there's a lot of issues and concerns and reasons about this, but I I would have rather waited until it was in the store and then maybe caught one on clearance. I would have much rather had that happen because that's what I've been doing with most of these big ships. But it's not an option here, so I ordered it through the Haslab. Now with this, they know a lot of things. They know that this will not sell at retail at this size and this price, and they know they made it smaller, that it wouldn't live up to the legacy of the ship. The other thing they absolutely knew while they were making this is they knew they were going to blow it up. And with that, a lot of people are upset that the whole blow up thing, I think that's just a small uh, issue. It's not really the biggest issue here, but the fact that they blew it up, it was kind of a funny little controversy that we had with it. So I think that's why this thing sort of disassembles like this. So the, you can take it out, all these little parts off, uh, the Jawas can be taking pieces off it or whatever. I think that was all planned from day one, from the get go to do it like this because they were going to blow it up and they knew it when they designed it and they made this. It was a big plan. Maybe it's not a bad idea after all. So we get into the Sentinel. I'm not a big collector of Marvel, but I know people love this thing. And I saw the previous largest version of this and I understand why this thing is so expensive. It's big, it's massive, it's supposed to have more articulation. I saw in person the previous version in person and was impressed with that one. So I can't imagine how impressive this other one is when it's so big. But there's problems. I know the knees are loose. And I've seen a lot of people just, you know, open it up and tighten it and it works fine for them. And other people are having even more problems with that. There should be some sort of official fix for this. Uh, they should have some fix. They should, hey, whether or not they're sending out a new leg or whatever but there should be something done for this. It's just kind of crazy that that happened. But aside from that, it looks great and a lot of collectors are happy with this. We also have Galactus coming on the way, so that's gonna be a new thing. Uh, people are looking forward to their Galactus to put next to their Sentinel, so that's gonna be a lot of fun. And Marvel collectors are loving it and these things are selling in high numbers. But the big question is, why can't this be at retail? See, we've seen the Jax Pacific figures that are like, what, 5 POA, 6 POA, I don't know how many POAs, points of articulation they have, and they're like 30 bucks or 50 bucks or something like that, and I think as time went by, they got more and more expensive. I think it was a $100 Darth Vader that was almost four foot tall, but these are shampoo bottle toys. These are just very crude toys made extremely cheap so that they can sell them, and the only aspect is that they're big. That's it. That's the only thing that really makes them interesting at all is that they're big. But the difference between this and what Haslab's doing with Sentinel and the Galactus is the fact that the Sentinel and the Galactus are fully articulated action figures. They do a lot more and they're going to have pack-ins with them and you know the tiers the upgrades and get extra figures and stuff like that. Extra heads and all of that. It is a premium product. This thing's not premium at all, but it's just kind of something to show you. Can you have a big item at retail that's cheap? Yeah, you know you're going to move a lot of product. Are you going to have a big expensive item that sits there for a year? No. So getting into Unicron, there's a lot of 
question surrounding Unicron also. And Unicron, I think, was a good figure. It looks amazing in the planet mode. And that's really what is the most impressive about it. The size, it's impressive. But here's the thing. If you were to have bring this to retail, if they brought it to retail, there's no way it'd be this size. No way. So it's not impressive at all if they make it half the size. That's what the Zeta one is or the Zero One Studio one. And that looks nice and all, but it's nothing compared to this in planet mode. This thing blows everything else away in planet mode. And it's even more impressive than a Death Star, a vintage Death Star next to it, just because of the sheer size of this sphere. But it's not just size, it's also presentation. It looks good. It looks good on a shelf. And your eye always goes to this if this is in your display. So we've seen at retail the Armada Unicron. Now that thing came out originally at 50. And it's another one that they put out uh, again in slightly different color variation. And then they, they actually charge $200 for this as sort of an online exclusive. But this thing itself doesn't work at retail anymore. Even this is too big for retail these days. So how many of these... Omega Supreme Titan class figures. Have you seen at retail? I haven't seen any of these at Walmart. I haven't seen any of these at Targets. And the only time you see something like this show up, one of these Titans show up, is when it was ordered online and returned to the store. And it's because the box showed up beat up. That's just the way it is. So looking at this situation here, even in Transformers, the big ones, anything bigger than Commander class doesn't show up at retail. And Commander class barely gets one or, well, they get a case which would be two figures. They get two figures on the shelf and it takes forever to sell those out. So commander class is even a risk these days. And they even had an issue with Walmart where the jet fires showed up and they put them on clearance right away. So it's crazy. They can't seem to handle the larger and more expensive items for these franchises. So we just funded this victory saber and it funded. It was a success. So that's a good thing. The thing about this one here is this should have been something that was at retail commander class and they got the price down. Go ahead and manufacture 30, 40, 50,000, 100,000, whatever. Uh, they could have even done this in an online exclusive. So this is more not because of the size, not because of the price, but more because of the fact that it's a US company that's putting out a predominantly non-US based item trying to see if there's any sort of interest in this type of item. And they may be using HasLab for stuff they feel like, and I use the word mainstream, but maybe it's not so mainstream. And that might be what they use HasLab for in the future. And it's a possibility. They did tell us that there'll be projects coming that are not $500, not huge. And guess what? Here it is. And it was a success. People are really excited to get this. And it's 180 bucks for something that is effectively the same scale as a commander class at 80. So at the end of the day, HasLab's here for big dream projects. These big dream projects that never would exist without HasLab. Whether or not you like it or I like it, I really want the, these things to go to retail, go on clearance, and I buy it on clearance. I wait a year and I get my payoff for waiting a year, but guess what? They caught on to it. They caught on to my scam of waiting till clearance, and I think other people, like a few other people, had the same idea I did. That's why these things don't work at retail. That's the real reason why these things don't work at retail. But on HasLab, they sell 100%. And that's that. If they make it, just put it online. There's someone somewhere is going to have to take the risk on it. And this day and age, the people that take the risk are the buyers and the consumers. It is what it is. Do I like it? it I, it's either I participate or I don't. And if we don't fund these... They just won't get made. Oh well. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Hadarium Hanger out.